I think this uh, Rizzo trade tells you all you need to know about Luke Voigt and what his uh, potential prospects are here, at least in the short term. He's gone. They're, well, I don't know if he's gone, but I just don't know if he'll be back. That's the thing. I well, mean, he's, he's not going to. I don't think he's going to play for the Yankees ever again. Well, I, I, you know, I don't know. But the, the point being, they add another left-handed bat after yesterday's embarrassing loss to Tampa Bay. Now, you know, that was about as bad as it gets. You got your ace on the mound. You're going for a sweep against one of your uh, arch rivals, somebody that you're trailing in the standings, and you basically, you know, blow chunks, uh, you know, all over the field blow down chunks. in Tampa. It's I haven't heard blow chunks since, like, the Wings <laughs> yeah, well, World did. movies. Well, yeah, yeah, well, they did. <laughs> I mean, it was brutal. And then, you know, the Mets did too, by the way. Yeah. You know, Taiwan Walker now all of a sudden becomes a huge question mark. And, you know, when you're talking about uh, the Dodgers, I'm like, what What this goes to kind of show you, I think, is that the Yankees and the Dodgers obviously are well fortified at the lower levels of their organization, or you can't make trades like this. Mm. I don't know what the Mets are doing. I don't know who they're protecting. I don't know what they're waiting for. But, you know, again, you know, the Mets are going to need some sort of infusion. Now it may be even a starting pitcher. I know Carrasco's coming back. It may even be a, a starting pitcher. But there's got to be some sort of infusion of uh, energy uh, on the offensive side of, uh, of, 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 the, of the diamond as well. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we've been talking about now for months with this team, their biggest weakness. To me, I'm thinking probably what's going on is organizational depth, Boomer. I think that's what's going on. The Dodgers, organizational depth. The Yankees, organizational depth. And they've got a lot of prospects that they can trade away. And by the way, Brian Cashman is doing Jedi mind tricks on these other general managers too, having them pay the rest of the salary because they want to stay under the luxury tax and they also want to go out and add more. But the Mets, they don't have what the Dodgers and the Yankees have to trade away. So when they are talking to other teams, these other teams are saying, well, we want your second, third, fourth prospect. Four other teams might be their ninth, tenth, and eleventh that's the because point. they're they're stocked more. So that's probably what's going on. And also, I think that Sandy Alderson is someone who probably doesn't want to trade away the top levels of prospects in their organization. He hated the fact that when he wasn't around here, that Jared Kelnick, and we know he's scuffled, but Jared Kelnick was sent in that deal with Edwin Diaz and Robinson Cano, and he wants to be careful. But Mets fans don't want to be careful. They're looking around. They see the series with the Braves not going exactly the way they wanted to. The World Series champions who are in the National League just got infinitely better yesterday. You know, think about that for a second because, uh, you know, they have Trevor Bauer still in their roster. He may never play again. He may never play again, yet they're still paying him. Yeah. Uh, and now they're adding Scherzer and, you know, they're adding Trey Turner, which is amazing to me. Which is amazing. They're basically adding the two best players. Yeah. Uh, well, with the exception of Juan Soto from the Washington Nationals. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you're talking about World Series champions. You have uh, playoff experience. You have a competitive spirit by t both of those guys, and they're adding them to the Dodgers. It's almost unfair. But I would, I would agree. And how about L.A. for a second? Because L.A. adds these guys. The Dodgers add these guys. The L.A. Lakers add Westbrook. Yeah, I you know, hated the L.A. That. Rams went out and got Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I mean, L.A. is just like on fire. That's right. And you also got Kawhi Leonard and Paul George with the Clippers. They also signed to know from uh, the Canadians, the L.A. Kings. Oh, they did. Yes. Which was the did. biggest move out of all of well, them, clearly. they're all big. And, yes. uh, and speaking of big, yes, we did trade for Ryan Reeves. It seems we. like this team... This team that was supposedly tough enough, according to the players, yeah. at the end of the last year decided that they're not tough enough, and they've brought in a bunch of, you know, ha I mean, hammers. This yeah. is what we have now. Mm -hmm. we, have, we, we literally can now go fight anybody, including Tom Wilson and the Washington Capitals. That's so, right. Uh, Chris Drury is making a tough uh, team tougher, and I think that was a uh, – and I think that exactly was an edict – uh, for uh, Chris Drury to, to make half happen, and he has made that happen, both uh, on the defense and also at the forward level. And now he's got a huge question mark. What do you do with Pete Zibanejad? Do you extend him and you give him a lot of money um, and, and term, or do you try to pry Jack Eichel out of Buffalo where there's a lot of money but less term and he's a younger player? Can you fit both of those guys 
on your team as it's currently constituted. I don't know how they can do that unless he still moves some other people around. But um, this has been a very, very active offseason for you know pretty much all the hockey teams around yeah. here. But now this baseball thing, what, uh, are the Mets going to get involved? Uh, they better get involved because this is what we were told when Steve Cohen was the owner and took over the team. Now they went out and traded for Francisco Lindor and they extended him and that's great. But they're a first place team that's got an opportunity to make a run and have a special year. And so far, everybody else is getting better. And so, the Mets, I guess, the asking price for the Mets seems to be higher than the asking price for everybody else because of the prospects that they don't want to part with and the fact that they don't have a very deep cupboard. But they've got to get involved. You cannot go into the second half of this season with the same team. You can't. And I know already it feels like the Dodgers are just going to run and hide with this thing. But the Mets are going to – when you got Jacob DeGrom and he's going to come back healthy, the Mets are capable of beating anybody uh, because you throw him out there in a seven-game series a couple of times and who the hell knows. Uh, so they they have to get better offensively. they got to upgrade, to me, the bullpen and the lineup. And I do believe the starting pitching will be okay. They have to. They have to. If they don't, I mean, it'll be – we'll be off the air. We won't come on the air on Monday. But, you know, tonight's big unveiling of the black jerseys again and Cookie Carrasco pitching and it should be an exciting night. It's not going to be exciting night unless – Javier Baez or Chris Bryant or Craig Kimbrell are on their way on a jet flying into Teterboro somewhere and getting ready to put on the black jerseys themselves. Because if that's not happening, that fan base tonight is going to be at City Field, is going to be flat out pissed and felt like they were lied to because it's going to feel like the same old Mets situation. I, I think you said what the most important aspect of all of this is. You are currently and have been for, what, 82 or 83 days in first place. Now, it is up to you to go and do something to re-fortify or um, rebuild part of this team, whether it be via the starting pitching or uh, in the bullpen. But more importantly, I, you know, I, I think it's Javi Baez myself. But it, it could be Trevor Story, especially with Lindor out for an extended. Well, I don't know if Story's going to have the same concessions or do the same things that that Javi Baez said he would do as far as playing different positions when Lindor comes back. I mean, to me, it's Brian or it's Baez. It's the Cubs. You know, the, you have to go to the Cubs. I'd love for the Mets at the end of today to have Kimbrel and Bryant on the team. You add those two guys, then you've got a legitimate shot with the group that you have. Yeah, the Dodgers, you mentioned, it feels unfair. It feels like the Tampa Bay Lightning is what it feels like, quite frankly. But it's baseball, Susan. We know about that. The Mets still could compete if they upgrade the team. You know, I'm just worried that they're not. I really I really am worried. And you hear this other stuff, too, about chemistry and how they don't want to mess up the chemistry in the clubhouse. I mean, what the hell? I mean, you say it every single day that we're sitting here. It's about being ruthless. It's about chasing that championship. It's about wanting to win. Steve Cohen on his opening Zoom call talked about winning multiple championships in the first five years or whatever he was talking about, you know, the, raising the bar. Well, this is where you raise the bar. Everybody else is raising the bar. I mean, for Christ's sakes, the Yankees are nine games out of first place. They're not even in the playoffs if they ended today, and they went out and made two of the biggest blockbusters of the trade deadline, and they're going for it. Well, they must have a much better organizational well, they do. system, as you pointed out, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why the Mets are holding back right now. I, I'm assuming There's still this, time. There's I, still I'm time. assuming that something is going to happen today. It's Better. probably a little bit too late. I would have loved to have have happened, at, you know, maybe a couple of week, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago or days ago, simply because you knew that Francisco Lindor was going to be out of the lineup for an extended period of time. Yeah, and it's like, how long is Brandon Drury going to be able to carry it? You know, I mean, seriously, just another just like, like less, yesterday was just another flat day for New York baseball. You know, it's just like you well, figured, okay. On the field. Well, that's what I'm saying. On the field, yes. And, and the the, um, the Yankees needed to win this game yesterday. I mean, they, they've had an okay run through this little gauntlet of teams that we were talking about when they came out of the All-Star break. And now they you know, are a breather than the next six games and where that, you know, they got to go at least five and one in these next six, I think. But, um, uh, you know, yesterday with, the, with your ace in the mound, just looking like he was not even into it. Well, I mean, that's sort of been the Yankees' problem, not Garrett Cole not being into it. But, 
you know, the Yankees have, there's always been, when they've started to look good, something happened. You know, it's not always a blowout like it was last night. A lot of times it's a bullpen complete meltdown that they'll have and they won't be able to sweep a series or, you know, it's a game that they have to have and something happens. Uh, So that's sort of been their story the entire year. So it's not surprising to me that Tampa got that last one. It is surprising it was 14 nothing. No, well, the sixth inning was a disaster. Yeah, of course. I mean, the first inning was a disaster for sure. It seemed like every ball that was hit was hit where somebody wasn't. Yeah. And uh, it was unfortunate for Garrett Cole. He did settle down uh, the next four innings, but that sixth inning was a, a freaking disaster. Um, but anyway, look, the Mets going to have to do something. They ha- they know it. We know it. Everybody else knows it. The question is, is what are they going to give up to, to make it happen? And is it going to be Javi Baez? Is it going? To, but they have to do. They have to do something offensively and defensively. So they need a short. They need a legit shortstop. Well, in they the short need one term, right now, in I mean, the short, short term, yeah, but the short term is like three weeks. That's a lot of games. And the Yank- the Mets have been in first place for what eighty two or eighty three uh, days, whatever it is. Yeah. You and you're going to allow an injury to your big offseason acquisition. Now all of a sudden, it derail your team. Well, I mean, he wasn't very good this entire year. Well, he, That's why well, I didn't make a huge yeah, deal yeah, out yeah, of it. But defensively, he's been very. Yeah, and good. he's a leader, and he obviously coddles Edwin Diaz and the whole thing, whatever it is. I mean, I the Baez strikes out a lot. I have to be fair if we're going to talk about Gallo's strikeout. I, I feel like everybody strikes out a lot. But no, Every Baez time we talk strikes about out. Somebody, somebody's striking out. But, this guy strikes out. That guy strikes out. Everybody strikes out. But, look at the look at the freaking analytics and the metrics. I'm like, I'm so sick with of it. Boomer though, you know, but I if will you say, are a Yankee fan. Yeah. Guess what? They just added another left-handed bat. So shut the f up when it comes <laughs> hey, to what are you telling me bats? to shut the f up? I don't I'm know what you're talking of, about. I'm sick of hearing it. Well, hold on. But Javi Baez though does strike out more than anybody at baseball. So it's you have to point that out. You know, I'm not giving you analytics. I didn't even talk about Rizzo. Did you just tell me to shut the f up? No, I said I said for Yankee. I was going to say it's a feel good Friday. It is to shut the f up when it comes to not having enough left handed stupid sticks. In well, the now they do. They got them. Oh yeah, they got two of them. They got two of them now. And they got they they got they can hit fifteen home runs a game now. Or I guess they could strike out fifteen times a game. Yeah, but this is the problem though, with the structure of Major League Baseball. The Yankees aren't winning the division. They're, no matter how good they are in the second half, they're still going to run into a one-game playoff you know, I was th- situation. I was the other day when I saw Stanton on base, and I was thinking, do you think that they won't worry about him actually yeah. having running to, from first base Absolutely. to second base? Absolutely, yeah. If they could use have him have a pinch runner but stay in the game, they would. 100%. It is unbelievable. Yeah, I know. He's an athlete. Is he? He's supposed to be an <laughs> athlete. Is he, though? I don't know. I do like the fact, though, that Brian Cashman said this team has struggled. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this thing, this whole thing is coming apart. The studio is coming apart. There's parts of the microphone and the stand that's sticking to my hands. But Brian Cashman said the offense was a problem in the postseason. Well, the last couple of years, the offense has been a problem during this particular season, and I am not going to let that be a problem again without addressing it. It still may be. We don't know how these guys are going to perform, but he was not going to sit around. He knew the team had big problems, and I don't think they're done because they haven't added any salary. Now I think that's that's even more amazing when you think about it. But now I think, like, there's so much protection in this lineup. A lot of protection. A lot of protection. A lot of protection. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of guys pitch? protected. Who's, who are you pitched Who is the least protected guy in this lineup now with the projected lineup? The least protected guy? The guy batting behind Stanton? Stanton, <laughs> your bro, bro, Stanton. Yeah, yeah. Rizzo, you could sit on my face. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But you know, another thing this Yankee lineup is now, Boomer. What? Balanced. Balanced lineup. Yeah, yeah, we know that now. A balanced lineup. Yeah, very balanced. Righty, lefty, righty, lefty. Go righty, lefty, righty, lefty. The whole game, the whole lineup. Oh, a balanced lineup. You gotta love it. So, do you think? Uh oh. What? Do I think what? Do you think? I think this is a loser for Rogi Odor. That's what I think. Rugned Odor? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fine. Do you think mm. that the Mets will let the trade deadline pass no without way. acquiring anybody? No way. I mean, the owner's nuts. He's He'll figure it out. He'll put the pressure on Sandy and and what's his name? Jake Scott. and uh, they'll Not get Jake some, Scott. Whatever his name is. Yeah, Zach Scott. Zach, Zach Scott. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Look, I'm a little tired this morning, man. Yeah, you went to Cincinnati yesterday. I did, and it, there was weather all over the place, you know, and just got back late. 
There was a lot of crap weather out there. Well, no, there's cra crap weather here. Yeah, yeah, delays and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> what happened? They were ready for me. Oh, thank because God. Look at this. They gave me the legit jersey now. That's the legit new That is beautiful. Jersey. Now, I will say. An authentic one. It does not really. I don't think it's going to fit me. I think it's going to be a little snug around the waist. Well, you put it in a frame. Yeah, I well, think. I don't know, but but it does look good, doesn't it? It looks great. Now, that's the real deal. Now, the if, nice thing I didn't realize they have Paul Brown's uh, signature inside yeah. the, uh, the collar. That is great. So for people who maybe weren't paying attention a couple months ago yes. when the Bengals announced their new jerseys, they sent Boomer a replica Joe Burrow jersey. Right. Well, they didn't have the real jerseys done yet. That was the problem. Doesn't matter. And get your, you, get and your bleep you guys, together. Then you guys put me in a completely awkward situation complaining about the Fugazi Joe Burrow jersey. Well, we were just standing up for you. We were doing I, I, what I was, was right. I was, in, I was not being. I was not asking you guys to stand up for me. But, but you some, guys, you don't. You're not supposed you guys to. Think you need to stand up for me yeah. when you don't have to stand up for. And there was no reason to stand we up. We don't for need me. to be asked. We're there to defend your honor. I, yeah, only. Def Why did you ask me first whether or not I know defending? Because I knew I could just see it in your eyes. I could see the disappointment see that, in your see eyes. That's that is so wrong. So I, you know, I met with the ownership of the team yesterday as yeah. well. They were the ones that kind of very funny mm. handed me this jersey and said, "Just want to make sure that we, you got the right jersey." Now because, see, because the guys that you work with were complaining about. It. I said, "Well, I can't control those guys." Yeah, you're welcome. By the way, but yeah, okay. you got the jersey that yeah. you were supposed to have. It was very nice, and so yeah. it looks great, man. Sometimes organizations, you know, they need a little smelling salt. And I was there to give it to him. Well, it was time to wake up, Cincinnati. I didn't, you, I, I didn't think you needed to do that, but uh, I was very appreciative that they did that and that they were waiting for me with it because they knew that you were poking fun at them because yeah. I got the other jerseys. Yeah, well, I was calling them out because that's not what you do with one of your franchises. Great. You don't send them a replica well, they, jersey. They, I, I can tell you this. They treated me with uh, kindness and open arms yesterday. So yeah, you think if the 49ers change their jersey, they're sending Joe Montana a replica Garoppolo? Hell no. Do you think Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.